some 30, some 60, and some 100. Praise the living God. I'm here. I'm here because I know there's some good ground still out there. There's some good ground still at FGCU campus. I believe for you. I'm excited for you because I know that God, he gives an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled that is in heaven. It does not fade away. And if you're kept by the power of God for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, the scripture says. There's salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. This is the last times. You know, the Bible says that to God, a thousand years is as yesterday gone by. A thousand years in God's sight is like yesterday gone by. It's old news. A thousand years. And I, the thing that gives me hope for you today is that the Bible says that God keeps his covenant to a thousand generations forever. But not to those who are disobedient to him. There's no promise for you if you're living in sin. You need to cry to God. You need Jesus. You must repent. You must humble yourself. You must seek him. You're not ready to meet God. You're not ready to stand before God in your sin. What are you going to do when you stand before God? What are you going to do if you're living as a worldly person? What are you going to do? Are you going to bribe God? Are you going to try to coach God on how he should judge you? Are you going to try to tell God how, how his, his law should be in the day of judgment? No. You're going to stand there and you're going to be pale in your face. You're going to be terrified in your, in your spirit. And you'll have nothing to say to him. And when he condemns you because you did not believe, you did not turn, you did not reach out to his hand and receive his mercy, what are you going to say then on judgment day? What are you going to say to, to him when he says, depart from me, I know you not, you who work iniquity? What are you going to say to him? Are you going to say you're wrong, God? You shouldn't do that, God? You're not allowed to judge me, God? You're not allowed to send me to hell, God? It says, are you going to tell the Almighty? Do you have an arm like him? Can you thunder with the voice like him, Job said? Oh, it says, then disperse the rage of your wrath. Look upon everyone who is proud and bring them low. Look upon everyone who is proud and humble them. Oh, hide their faces in hidden darkness. Bind them in the darkness forever, in the dust forever. Are you able to do this? God says, if you are, then I, he will confess to you that your own right hand can save you. No, your own right hand can't save you. You do not have the power. You are not able. You are not able to accomplish the things which God has told you. You must accomplish. You must be born again. You must repent. You must trust in the living God. There's no one else to trust in. There's nothing else out there that can save. I'm an example of this. I know the terror of the Lord. I know God's mercy, His patience, His long-suffering. He is forbearing, wanting none to perish, but all to come to repentance. Don't you understand the cry of the Holy Spirit? The Scripture says, The Spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him who thirsts say, Come. Let him who hears, let him come and drink freely the water of life that flows from the river of God. There's a river that makes glad the streams of God. He is in the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High God. God is in the midst of her. Yes, He will break your bonds apart. He will take the yoke off your neck. You will dance. Yes, and you will sing praises to God. You will pour out your heart before Jesus. And you will say, my Redeemer lives. The God of my salvation, the rock of my salvation. He alone saves. He alone is worthy. He alone is, is worthy of my life. Oh, Jesus. You still on campus here, man? I thought you'd be graduated by now. Yeah. Man, some, cork for Jesus. some vain glory, man. Cork -bocking, cork -bocking. You know, you were the guy that was sitting on his knees asking questions about the Bible. Now look at you, man. You've, you've changed. Changed into God's image. I say, look, I'm changed every day from glory to glory as I look into the Word of God. And as I choose to be a doer of the Word, as I choose to let God... Work his mighty work in me, his strange work in me, his peculiar work in me. The Bible says that Jesus Christ, he came to redeem to himself his own peculiar people who are zealous for good works. Are you, do you understand that you need to be zealous? I know you're zealous. You're zealous to do good on the college exam. You're zealous for the things of the flesh. You're zealous to have the biggest muscles, to be able to bench the most, maybe. You're zealous to have a bunch of friends. You're zealous to make a bunch of money. Oh, but Jesus is zealous too. And the Bible says the zeal for my house has eaten me up, Jesus said. Jesus was zealous for, soul, for lost souls. And I'm zealous for your, for your lost soul today. I am right there with Jesus crying out for you that you would but open your heart, that you would but let God infiltrate your heart, your mind, the things of the Spirit. Do you understand the Bible says that he who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit and he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. There's a will of God, a plan of God for your life, that you would be a, that you would be a mother, that you would be a father, that you would be a, a, a steward, a good steward. Oh, yes, Jesus talked many times about stewards, talents, things that are given to you and I, 
that we would trade and we would increase and we would abound in the things of the kingdom. But there were people who didn't abound. There were people who didn't increase the things of God, the work of righteousness, the work of faith, with power. There were people who didn't, didn't, esteem, didn't esteem these things as precious. And then when God came to settle accounts, it says, it says he said to bring to me those enemies of mine who would not have me rule over them and slay them before me, Jesus said. That's going to happen to you if you don't repent. Did you know that? Did you know that if you do not repent and if you do not take the, the things of the Spirit and let them be the focus of your life, that someday God's going to say, bring, bring that woman to me. Bring that young man to me who would not have me rule over them and slay them before me. Bad example. A bad example. Not, a, not, not the right way to follow. No, don't do it. Don't be, don't be deceived. Don't allow yourself to follow vain glory. Don't allow yourself to follow the things of this world that are perishing. The things that don't satisfy. They don't bring life. They don't bring goodness. They don't bring anything. They, they, they're just they're broken cisterns, the Bible says. It says, my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. And they have made for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water, Jeremiah said in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 13. Broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Sin produces death. Sin. We're not just all sinning nowadays. What you fail to understand is that there is a sin. There is a sin that does not lead to death. But there is a sin that does lead to death. It's willful sin. It's a pattern of sin. It's a lifestyle. God's reaching out to you, young lady. You're the one. You're the one. I know. It bothers your conscience. You're the one. There's, that's the thing. You know, the ones who are the worst sinners, the worst vileness, the worst evil are the ones who would be the strongest Christians. Oh, but if you would just stop agreeing with homosexuality and stop agreeing with lesbianism and stop agreeing with that for which God hates, and you could agree with your adversary quickly while you were along the way, Jesus said. You must agree with God because he's your adversary when you're in sin. He's the one who's going to turn you over. He'll turn you over to himself, the judge. He's the judge. He's, he's, the, he's the judge and the jury. He's the, he's the executor of all judgment, righteous judgment. God does not judge according to appearance. He judges according to the heart. He knows the heart of man. He knows what's inside of you. And I, that should make you tremble. That should make you tremble that God knows the evilness, the things that you're capable of doing without any love in you. God, he takes, he, God gives and he takes away, the Bible says. And he is true, Romans chapter 3 says. He is true and every man is a liar. Every man is a liar in themselves. I'm a liar without God, but when I walk in him, I walk in truth. I walk in love. I walk in the light when I am in God. You need Jesus. Without him, you're lost today. Without him, you have no hope today. What are you doing in this world? What are you living for out here? What are you chasing out here? What's going to fulfill you? The day of judgment's coming. Don't you understand, young Jesus man? Jesus smoked weed. Here, here comes another deception here, Morgan and Morgan. And you can smoke weed too. Morgan and Morgan, agents of the wicked right one. Here. If you say FGC, you, 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 you smoke weed? Do you want to confess right now? I do not smoke weed the publicly. Why are you <laughs> publicly? <laughs> publicly? <laughs> look, everything's public to God, young man. But God if you sees like everything. To smoke weed, look, 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 look. You, look, to go look, to a you nice don't smoke shop. You don't smoke weed publicly until they legalize it. Until they legalize. Look, if they legalize weed, will you? No, what are you doing, man? Come on, is this a joke? Is everything a joke to everybody nowadays? Is everything? Are we all silly children? Sometimes. No, there's no silliness here. I'm trying to talk about the issues of your heart. I love fornication. You see, talk about here fornication. comes, here comes the spirit. Now let's talk about fornication. Spirit, this What's is wrong spiritual. With fornication? Okay, we had yes. This is good. The Bible says, when you look at a woman to lust for her, you've committed adultery with her in your adultery. heart already. For the eye is the lamp of the body. The, the eye. lamp of the body. If your eye is single, you know what that means. Focus on God, right? If it's single. You don't look to the left or to the right. You look straight ahead, the Bible says. Your eyelids look straight ahead, Proverbs 4 talks about. If it's single on God, it says that you will walk in the light. But Okay, now what if you have a hold partner? On. Then let, me, let me finish the scripture. This is okay. Matthew 6, 22. Very important. But if your eye is evil, the Bible says, your whole body is full of darkness. And Jesus said, if the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? It's huge, because without light, there isn't darkness. There has to be darkness. I, I, I don't know how that works. That, Jesus never said that. Without light, there <laughs> the, isn't darkness. So well, because no. there was light, there had to be darkness. Because darkness is absence of light. Therefore, oh, because God was created, there had to be evil. So in your means, you're telling people that they shouldn't be evil when God created evil. So, so, Therefore, so, you're evil. So, you're evil! So, 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 so you're excusing evil? Is that what you're saying? Is this yes. your doctrine? 
Because you're excusing evil, you're excusing child evil. molestation? Is this what you're doing? Are you excusing rape? Are you excusing, are you excusing murder? Murder <laughs> happens, right? People got to Are die. you excusing the things of, of evil? God Would you dare do so to people. these people out here who are listening here? That woman is outside the house and not in the kitchen. <laughs> I need to stone her, correct? Come on, she's man. She's not listening to my the, manly she should, rules. She should be taking care of the house if yes. she's a woman, yes? Yes. Yeah, right? I'm not so saying that women can't work. Stoned. My wife so has a full-time job. Her, so no, 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 no. No, you do error not knowing you the scriptures nor the power of God, the Bible says. I'm a murderer now. No, listen. So now if you God, hate, if you, I'm a murderer. God does say if you hate in your heart without a cause, you are a murderer in your heart. I love her, but she's not in the kitchen right now. So because of that, I'm not saying you look. She's going, she's that does, no, you did, you're not hating her, though. I'm, I don't hate her, but I don't Jesus said when her. you hate in your heart, that's murder in your I heart. I need a boulder. She needs to be stoned. No, man, you, you that was the law. Okay. No, we're, hold on a minute. Oh, so that's hold evil, on a minute. That's evil and bad. Hold on that's a minute. Evil and bad. Show me the scripture. The Hello. Show me, <laughs> show me the scripture in the Old Testament that says when women don't take care of the house, they must be stoned. Okay. That's not in the Bible. That's, that's, that's not, not even in the Old Testament. Scripture. No, but if you're no, but no, but it does say if you if you if you commit fornication and you are an adulterer, then you're going to be stoned to death. Did you know that? You know what? Did you know I, that? I like being stoned. It's a type of voyeur. God, God, God would have to stone all the pornography people who indulge. Me, I was I was seriously addicted in drowning in, in pornography. Lisa Ann, drowning in, in destruction. I used to look. I was I was deep into it. I'm I'm here to show you the way out. I'm here to show you how God can save you from that lifestyle. You that know, do you feel really good at the end of that when, when it's all done and now you have to now you have to go to bed and on your conscience, the shame and the guilt? Is that really? Look, After I get rid of the don't you have a conscience? Don't you have a conscience? Don't you know that God's going to judge those things? He's judging in the spirit already. He's already judged you. He's already judged you. You need to be, you need to come out from the judgment. You need to be saved from the judgment. Then why oh. did he give us a conscience? To show you right from wrong. To give, look, you have the ability to reason and to rule and reign. When, then when, why can't we choose what we want to do, That's sir? the battle, because you don't have the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm trying to tell you, how to get the Holy Spirit. I don't want the Holy Spirit. I just want to well, because you, Yeah, well, that's the problem. You see, you love, the Bible says you love pleasure rather than God. And that's what you need to be changed from. Look, I used to love that, too. I used to be right where you're standing. I know what you're feeling. So I know. Why can't I live in sin and so I'm ready to be like you? Why? Oh, because you're not guaranteed not another ready. day. You're not guaranteed another day. Why am I not ready? Why are you testing God's sins? patience? You're testing God's patience. You are testing His look, patience. Look, look, look. God gave you life. God gave you life. And He showed you that there is a. The Bible says in Proverbs 14, verse 12, there's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it is the way of death. It's the way that says, like this man says. Why can't I just live in sin a little longer? Another day, another year, another day. Then, then I'll just, someday I'll give it up somehow. No, it's not how it works. Why not? Because. I demand a recall. Because. Who voted God to be my Because president? the devil, it says, masquerades as an angel of light. The devil, he's the one that masquerades trying to show, make you think that you're having fun. Are you a registered voter? Look, look, the Bible says this. The, way, the, the Bible says that the way of the unfaithful is hard. The way of the unfaithful is hard. The Bible says that the commandments of God are not burdensome. For we have overcome the world. The children of God have overcome the world. This is the victory, even our faith. I have victory over that. I used to live in that deception. You know, it's funny. I wish I could go back in time. I wish I could go back to myself when I was in college and shake myself up and say, Get Wake up, Adam, you fool. You're shaking yourself up you know, you know, you know, You know what? You know what's funny? Because you know what? You know, I wish I could have went back, but you know what? God shook me up when I had four felonies for selling drugs. God shook me up when I had heart failure five years ago because I laughed at a guy in the pool hall taking a big swig of beer. God shook me up. I don't want you to be shook up this way. Because I tell you what, if God shakes you up and you die in your sin... You're going to end up in hell forever, and that's pretty serious if you ask me. It's pretty warm there. That's I'm not a pretty serious if you ask me. The Bible says the smoke of their torment, it arises forever. There's no rest day or night. You can't get away from that. You're not, going to, you're not going to get away from the judgment of God when you stand before him and he says, depart from me, cast him out into the lake of fire. What are you going to say? God, no, you can't do it. You're not allowed to do it. You're not allowed to send me to hell. You have no choice in the matter, but now you have a choice. You have an opportunity right now, sir. You can come to Jesus and receive from him. He died for you. He's like Oprah. You get Jesus. No, you Oprah's a, Oprah's a, Oprah would never tell you this. Oprah would, because this, is a, this message does not make friends. But you know what? It makes peace with God. It makes God happy because you know what? It stirs up your heart. It makes you think about the reality of who God is. A message from Oprah doesn't make you think about that. It makes Oprah. you think about man. It's man-centered. I tell you, this message of the gospel is God-centered. It's focused about Jesus. Jesus. 
It's all about him because he did it all. And he smoked weed too. No, don't lie. Don't be a liar on top of all the, the crimes and rebellions. No, oh, you know he didn't smoke weed. Come on. He smoked so much reefer he was out of his God, dead God, body. God does not sin, okay? God, God, it's impossible for God to even lie. God cannot lie. God, God, does, God doesn't even tempt man, the Bible says. God cannot be tempted with evil. All In the book of James. Provided by God should be smoked. Oh, okay. And are you going to take those scriptures now and try to twist them? That's, twist them that's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. Yeah, I see. You see the carnal mind? It's enmity with God. I mentioned about twisting the scriptures. You think about twisting the joint up. That's what you think about, twisting the joint up. Don't you have any reason in your mind? Don't you understand the things of the Spirit? The Bible says that the, the he, who, he who minds the things of the Spirit says he walks in the Spirit. But he who minds the things of the flesh, he, he says he walks in the flesh. You must not walk in the flesh. If you walk in the flesh, you're going to die. You have to turn from your sin. Folks, if you do not repent, it's serious. There's judgment to pay, but there's heaven if you turn to Jesus. If you come to Jesus Christ and you love Jesus Christ as he loved you, you trust in him, you seek him. Oh, the scripture promises you. It promises you that if you would seek him with the whole heart, he would be found of you. Why don't you seek God? Why don't you be an example? Friend of the world, enemy of God. You know that? She's the friend of me, so she's the friend of everyone. She's a friend of the world. And you're, you, I know you're of the world because you already told me. I love the world. The world's a great no, place. You know, it's so funny. At least we got an honest person on this campus. Some, I, I hate it when Christians come up to me or people who say they're Christians and they say, I'm a Christian, but it's okay for me to live in the world and live in sin. At least we got an honest person here who knows he's a friend of the world. He knows he loves the world. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 says this. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Because it's like some crazy spiritual shit you need to go and follow. Because you need to worry about what's going to happen after you're dead. He's getting some. Not he's getting where something. You are now. That's true. You need to worry about where you're going to be after you've lived. There you go. You there you go, go, man. No, you're going to have a lot to worry about. You're going to have a lot to worry about, man. You're going to wish you. You need to make sure you are. You're going to wish. I don't need a microphone to preach the Lord. I know what I'm doing. You people are ready for your condemnation as long as you just pray to your sins. Oh, man. Let me translate this a little bit better here. Confusion. God is not the author of confusion. God, God, God he's true in the fact that you do need to think about, about what's going to happen when you die. That's the most important thing. Think about any investor on earth. Any investor who's smart and knows how to deal with their, with their finances correctly is going to be planning for the future. Sin is not planning for the future. Sin is trying to gratify yourself now. Sin is trying to do what feels good, selfishness, and, and whatever the consequences are. That's why when people look at pornography, they don't think about the consequences, that they're not going to be able to be a faithful husband, a faithful wife to their, to their spouse, because they're always going to be thinking about some other woman, some other man. They're going to be thinking about some other pleasure. And the Bible says... That, that the eyes of men are never satisfied. Therefore, hell is also not satisfied. It's enlarged its mouth. For all the sinners, all the drunkards that are going to head there someday. Is that you? God, I'm here to tell you the way out. Jesus Christ. He was born of a virgin. He came with the testimony. He lived a life, but he didn't sin. The Bible says he was tempted in every way, but he, he was without sin. Jesus, that's how you know you can trust him. How, how do you know you can trust Jesus? He never sinned. He just lived righteously. He just prayed. He just loved his neighbor. And then he went to the cross and died for your sins, my sins, the whole world, everybody. Oh, and he, he, he was the example of us, of what love really is. You can say it's all about love. You can say, let, let, let people just live, live as homosexuals. Just, just accept them the way they are. That, that's what love really is. Is that really what love really is? Do you define love according to the, what you think is love or what love is? Love is not allowing people to destroy them, their own bodies and the things around them. That's not love. Love is, love is to exalt what is truth and what will remain. There are things that will remain on the earth. It's the word of God. It's what's going to endure. This is not going to endure here, all the stuff you see. The fashions are not going to endure. The, the Hollywood industry and all the music industry, they will not endure. No, it's only the person who is found written in the book of life, who does God's will, who loves God. Do you understand that that's what's going to endure is the word of God? Jesus said it in Matthew 24, verse 35. He said, Most assuredly I tell you that heaven and earth will pass away, but my word, I tell you, will never pass away, Jesus said. It will never pass away. I'm hidden in his word. The word is in me. I am in the word of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and guess what? We beheld his glory. I beheld the glory of God. I see him. 
I see him in the, in the brethren. I see him in my brother Israel, my brother Rick. I see Jesus Christ living in them. The Bible says in Galatians, I am crucified with Christ. I do not live, but it's Christ who lives in me. And the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me and loved me. And he loves you. Yes, he cares for you. That's why we're here making a spectacle of ourselves, being the filth of the world, being the ones who have to lay things down to see someone saved. Someone get saved, please. That's my cry every day. Oh, and I see it. And I know Jesus said that, that a man, when he loses one sheep out of the hundred, he leaves the 99 and he goes after the one. And he searches until he finds the lost sheep. It says when he finds the lost sheep, he grabs it and lays it on his shoulder and he comes back rejoicing. And he tells his friends, rejoice with me. I found the lost sheep. Oh, rejoice with me. Jesus said, even so, there is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just people who need no repentance.